गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स पेपर नंबर टू जीरो फाइव एट फाइव पेपर नंबर टू जीरो फाइव एट फाइव फर्स्ट लेट इज गो थ्रू द फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन नाउ दीज टू क्वेश्चन आर बेस्ड ऑन डेटा सफिशियंसी नाउ इन दिस वन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन हाउ मेनी पीपल आर स्टैंडिंग इन ए स्ट्राइक लाइन नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट वॉट द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ पीपल standing in a straight line now statement 1 what is the condition given here j stands out from the right end of the line as j is out from the right end of the line how many persons are there to the right hand side of j two persons j stands out from the right end of the line and q stands to the immediate left of j q and j are adjacent to each other and only two people stand between q and t how many persons are there in between q and t there are only two persons between q and t isn't it now this is one possibility for this then what is the other possibility here q j and t can be at the right end as well two possibilities and only two people stand between q and t no person stands to the left of t as no person stands to the left of t now with the help of condition number 2 in this case how many persons are there at least three persons are there but where is the condition clearly given that none of the persons is standing that means t is at the left hand As T is at the left end, then how many persons are there? Are you getting the answer or not? Hence, one alone is sufficient. Hence, only one alone is sufficient to determine the number of persons in the row. Next one. Now let us check out two also. R stands out from the R stands out from the left end of the line. As R stands out from the left end of the line, there are two persons to the left hand side of this R, and Q is one of the immediate neighbors R R. as q is one of the immediate neighbors of r either q can be to the left hand side of r or to the right hand side of r only two people between q and s as there are only two people between q and s 1 2 s two people between q and s now in this case how many persons are there two people between q and s either this s can be to the left hand side of q or to the right hand side of q isn't it then only two people then how many persons are there in this row tell me how many persons are there in this row five persons now in this case you are getting five now in this case you are getting four two different answers and two alone is not sufficient and again one more thing which is also not clearly given that how many persons are there to the right hand side of q and the right hand side of s as well isn't it as of now we got that two different answers and so what is your answer here only one alone is sufficient and only one alone that is given in choice three one alone is sufficient that is choice 3 is the answer <coughs> then coming to question number 2 now in this one how far is point x from point j now the question is about what what is how far is this x from point j and statement 1 point q is 2.5 meters to the west of j q is 2.5 meters to the west of j can be represented like this left hand side and f is 2.5 meters to the south of q f f is what is the distance here 2.5 meters to the south of q next one f is 2.5 to the south of q and point x is to the east of point f such that f is the midway midpoint of 5 meters line between the joining points m and x now whatever this one m is in between f and x as m is in between f and x what is the distance here point x is to the east and such that f is the midway of 5 between m and x f is 5 in between m and x the total distance between m and x is how much 5 now if f is here m is here x will be here then what is the distance here 2.5 and 2.5 are you getting the answer or not how far is point m x from point j x from point j cheppa na answer em ostundi 2.5 now x is 2.5 meters from point j now once again point x is to the east of point f that is clearly given hence 2.5 and 2.5 then what is your answer here and this is the only thing left over hence 2.5 meters one alone is sufficient as of now then coming to the second one <coughs> r is 5 meters to the south of q r is 5 meters to the south of q r is here r is 5 meters to the south of q Z is to the east of R. 
z is to the east of r x is 2.5 meters to the north of z x is 2.5 meters to the north of z and z is to the east of what z is to the east of r and x is 2.5 meters to the north of z and j is 2.5 meters to the east of q now j is 2.5 meters to the east of q at j is 2.5 meters to the east of q x is 2.5 meters to the north of z isn't it x is and j is 2.5 is there any information regarding this one now here some other element z is there here hence we cannot able to determine this then what is your answer here only one alone is sufficient only one alone choice please choice two now this is about question numbers one and two then coming to question number three onwards now in question number three what is information here 12 people are seated in two parallel rows containing six people each one two three four five six and next row one two three four five six this is how these 12 people are seated in such a way that there is an equal distance between adjacent persons in row one m and o p q and r and and all of them are facing south now this is row one and who are the persons in this row one m and o p q and r m to r are the six persons and in row two a b c d f a to f are the persons seated in row two then are seated therefore in the given arrangement each member seated in a row faces another member there is no other parameter added to this one just seating arrangement the persons <coughs> then b faces the one b is facing the one who is who sits out to the right of q who sits out to the right of q q is here now out to the right of q one two three now out to the right hand side of this of q is this person now b sits opposite to this person this is one possibility and what is the other possibility here now 1 2 3 4 5 6 if q is second from the right hand side then whatever this b b must be here that is the second part and one more possibility is there if q sits out from the right hand side then b will be at the left end but whereas what is the information here b does not sit at any of the extreme ends of the line as b does not sit at any of the extreme ends of the line hence we are left with only two possibilities now three people sit between q and n between q and n how many persons are there three people now between q and n how many persons are there there are three people three people sit between q and n r is neither an immediate neighbor of n nor q r is an immediate neighbor of n nor q that means this r is not adjacent to n and q as r is not adjacent to n and q now in this case r cannot be here and r cannot be here and in this case r cannot be here then what is the only possibility for this r r must be here isn't it because this r is neither an immediate neighbor of n nor to q and coming to the second one r cannot be at this place and r cannot be in these two places hence r must be here third from the left hand and here in the first case third from the right hand r is neither an immediate neighbor of n nor q one of the immediate neighbors of r faces f one of the immediate neighbors of r faces f one of the immediate neighbors of r either this person or this person is facing f and these two persons are the immediate neighbors of r out of which this person cannot face r this person cannot face f because this person is already facing b hence one of the immediate neighbors of r faces f now this person is the immediate neighbor of r and this person is facing f one of the immediate neighbors of r faces f here also one of the immediate neighbors of r faces f next one only three people between f and the one who faces o f and the one who faces o there must be exactly three persons three persons in between f and o 1 2 3 now o will be here now this person is facing o there must be three persons in between f and the person who is facing o then in the second case is it possible here three persons in between f and the person o is completely ruled out hence we are left with only one possibility next one only three people between f and the one who faces o a sits second to the left of the one facing m a sits second to the left of the one who is facing m now in this one m can be either third from the left hand or second from the right hand of this row isn't it and out of which out of this <coughs> a sits second to the left of the one now tell me whether m can be at this place if m is here second to the left of this person is not possible hence m cannot be at this place m must be here if m is here and a sits second to the left of the one facing m now second to the left of the one facing m will be this one a sits second to the left of the one 
facing M. Now, here. A, what, whatever this A, A sits second to the left of the one facing M. Now, this B is facing M. As this B is facing M, A sits second to the left of the one facing M, hence A must be at this place. Done with this one? Now, who is facing M here? B is facing M. As B is facing M, hence A can be the second left. And C is not an immediate neighbor of B. As C is not an immediate neighbor of B, C must be at this end. And N does not face E. As N does not face E, hence E will be here. If E is here, then who is the person left over here? D is here. And in this case, M, N, O, and P is the person left over. And this is how these 12 persons were seated in two different rows, six in each. Now question numbers three to seven. Now question number three, any answer to this one? Who among the following faces E? Yes, tell me who is the person facing R. Faces E is R. Then question number four. And which of the following is true with respect to the given information? O is an immediate neighbor of R. O is an immediate neighbor of R is false. F sits exactly between A and D. F is exactly between A and D is also false. D faces M. That is again false. And choice for M faces one of the immediate neighbors of F. M faces one of the immediate neighbors of F. This is also false. Then what is your answer here? None. That is choice four. Now question number four, choice four. Then coming to question number five. And in this one, which of the following groups of people represent the people seated at the extreme ends of both the rows? Extreme ends, who are those four persons? O, Q, A, and C. O, Q, A, and C, and, and it is given in choice five. Then next one. Now question number six. And which of the following is true regarding P? P is here. Now regarding P, what is the statement which is true here? Both R and Q are the immediate neighbors of P. Yes, definitely true. And so what is your answer here? Choice two. R and Q are the immediate neighbors of P. Then question number seven. Who among the following sits second to the right of the person who faces P? Who among the following sits second to the right of the person who faces P? Now who is facing P here? F. Now, who is facing F here? P. Then what is the answer? Only one. Now, this is about question number seven. Then question number eight. Now, this question number eight and nine, these two questions are based on critical reasoning, isn't it? Now, question number eight. Seventh one. Now, question number seven. Who among the following sits second to the right of the person who faces B? Now, who is facing B here? Now, M is facing B. As M is facing B, then who sits second to the right of this M? Second to the right of this person is O. That is choice five. Seventh one, it is choice five. Then coming to question number eight. Now in this eighth one, what is information given here? Question number eight. <coughs> Kalikar is a famous fabric thread work. Kalikar, what is this Kalikar? It is a famous fabric thread work that originated in CTG of a country, isn't it? It is very famous thread work and it is originated in the city G of a country. And following are the two facts about this Kalikar. What are those two facts here? The first one is Kalikar was an innovation of Hardali tribe of city G. Though the tribe lost, though the tribe lost its existence long ago, long ago there is no, long ago the existence of this tribe is completely lost. As of now, this tribe is nowhere existing, isn't it? Long ago, this is a term that has to be stressed here. And at the same time, Kalikar is still very much in demand. Then, the second one, only the authentic Kalikar depicts fruits and flowers of a specific tree that was worshipped by Hardali tribe. Only the authentic Kalikar depicts, and what they depicts in this one, in that art, fruits and flowers of a specific tree that was worshipped by Hardali tribe. Then which of the following can be inferred from the given information? As tell me what can we infer from this one? Inference means which is drawn from the above statement. Though it is not directly drawn, but whereas it can be drawn through other means as well. As tell me what is the answer here? Now in this question number, choice one, Hardali tribe did not worship gods. Is there any information whether they worship gods or not? Now in the above statement they are talking about they are worshipping trees doesn't mean that they do not worship gods. Hence first one ruled out. Second one since not many people belong to the Hardali tribe others came to know about the tribe only through its innovation to of Kalikar. 
how this person could able to know about this tribe is nowhere clearly specified in the paragraph. Maybe because of this one, this calicar or just because of something else is nowhere clearly given and second one is also ruled out. Then coming to the third one, some people not belonging to the tribe have taken the calicar work forward and managed to keep fulfilling its demand, whether we can conclude this one or not or whether we can infer this one or not. Yes, tell me. Yes, what are the words that can strengthen this argument? follow Now in the above first statement it is clearly given. Long ago, this tribe completely lost its existence. As of now, this tribe is nowhere there. Though the tribe is not there, but whereas this tribe, Kalikar, isn't it? This tribe innovated this art of Kalikar. And though this tribe is not there, still this Kalikar is going, which implies that the persons who does not belong to this Kalikar is working on this one as of now. In the Gmunde Pen Chala, Yoga Ketwe, the Anthony Penaner, Edi, E tribe. E tribe, we put Anthony Pen of Rukoda starting Euro, Vilma Thramej, so E Calicar. Tharothe may pen with Anthony Pen of Rukoda, put Kora Chala demand on the put Kora Chalaman Jastuna. Ever Jastuna Marie, the persons who does not belong to this tribe are now working on this one. Whether we can definitely conclude this one or not. And what is the third one here? Third one is an inference that can be drawn from the above paragraph. Then what about question number nine here? Now in question number nine, ever since, ever since we started involving our employees in the key decision making, ever since. Now the words that are to be highlighted. Ever since we started involving our employees in the key decision making process from the last year, the productivity of our employees has been 100%. Statement by whom? Statement by the HR manager of company D. And so what is the main reason behind this one behind? Achieving this 100 percentage, 100 percentage productivity achieved because of what? Because of involving these employees in the key decision making process. And which of the following statements can be inferred from this one? As tell me what can be inferred. Inference means again drawing from the above paragraph. Then first one, company D completely relies on its employees. Are they completely de depending on the employees? No. Second, the productivity of employees of company D has always been satisfied in the past, and what was their performance ahead of this one previously is nowhere clearly given, isn't it? Hence, the second one is ruled out. No information regarding their performance before this one. And the third one, employees of company D have not become competent enough, competent enough to give valuable sessions. Are they giving valuable sessions or not? Once they are involved in this one, then only 100% is they could able to achieve. That means they are giving some valuable information. Then fourth one, and the third one is also ruled out because they are not, not become competent, whether they become competent or not, as they are involving in this one. No. Next one, fourth one, involving employees. Involving employees in decision making process is an effective method to motivate them. Isn't it? Can we definitely conclude about this one or not? And employees of company D will always take the correct decisions in all the situations. Now, can we conclude anything regarding this one because the word always is given. And so what is your answer here? Choice for is the answer. And this one, what we can definitely conclude about. Third one. What is third one here? Third one, employees of company D have now become competent enough to give valuable suggestions. No. Have now become competent. Now they have become competent or earlier also they were competent. Earlier they were competent, but where they do not have that opportunity to share their information. Isn't it? Now they have that opportunity to involve in this process. Now they are giving this information. It doesn't mean that earlier they were not, they are incompetent. Can you put them up in the involved Now they are sharing their information with these people as well, their ideas with this one. Earlier they have their ideas, but where they could not able to find a stage wherein they can able to share that information with them. In the Kamundu Koda, all competent. Can I make the all key? Idi led. Sarena, system led. All involved chair led the capital, all our kitchen collapsed. Can you put him up in the wall and put involved chair share capital? Now they are doing this. I claim under have now become competent. You put a competent I air on her. In the Kamundu competent on our lay on one information on the lay. Hence, the other one is ruled out. Done with this one. Now we are left with only choice four. Then, question number 10. Now question number 10 onwards, what is the information here? Eight friends, 
L M N O P Q R and S are seated around a square table, isn't it? In total, how many persons are there? There are eight persons. Now these eight persons are seated around a square table in such a way that four persons at the corners and four persons at the centers of this one. And again, any information regarding this one? And each other for the ones who sit in the middle of the sides face the center. Now the persons who are seated at the middle of the sides are facing the center. And the persons who are seated at the corners are sitting away from the center. Done with this one? This is how these eight persons were seated. And at the same time, condition number one, R sits out to the right of P, and P sits at one of the corners of the table. Information clearly specified. What is that information here? P sits at one of the corners of the table. As P sits at one of the corners of the table, we can fix this P at any one of these corners. P sits at one of the corners of the table. R sits out to the right of P. As R sits out to the right of P, this P is facing away from the center. R sits out to the right of P, R will be here. R sits out to the right of P, and P sits at one of the corners of the table. Only one person between O and R. As only one person between O and R, how many possibilities for this one? Only one person between O and R, O can be here, that is one possibility. And what is the second possibility in this category? Now the second possibility could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out of this one, P is facing away. And what is the other information here? R sits out to the right of P, R will be here. And one person between R and O, O will be here. Done with this one, only one person between O and R. And M is, what about this M, the persons who are at the corners are facing away, and the centers are facing towards the center. Now this R is facing the center. And M is one of the immediate neighbors of O. As M is one of the immediate neighbors of O, in case one, M must be here. But as in case two, M can be either here or here. There are two possibilities for this M in case two. And N sits second to the right of M. As N sits second to the right of M, if M is here, if M is at this place, then what happens here? N sits second to the right of M, hence N and P must be in the same place, which is not possible. Hence M cannot be here, hence M must be here. If M is here, N sits second to the right of M, N must be here. Are you following this one or not? Then again, coming to this one, N sits second to the right of M, here M is here. This person is facing away, N sits second to the right of M. Next one, only three people between M and L. As only three people between M and L means M and L must be opposite to each other. Now in the second case, what happens here? M and L are not op cannot be opposite because M and P are opposite to each other. And the second case is ruled out. Now we are left with only one. Now three people between M and L. S sits to the immediate right of L. S is to the immediate right of L, then S will be here. If S is here, then who is the person left over? L, M, N, O, P, Q is the person left over. Done with this one? Now this is about question numbers 10 to 14. Now in this one, question number 10. Four of the following five are alike in a set and way. That means it is nothing but an odd man out. Now in this one, S, R, Q, O. S, R, Q, O means these four persons are seated at the centers and M is the only person who is seated at the corner, except M. The remaining four persons are seated at the centers and M is at the corner. Choice, five. Then question number 11. Now in this question number 11, what is the position of N with respect to L? Position of N with respect to L, L is facing away and second left. Second left, what is the answer here? Choice two is the answer. Second left, that is choice two. Then question number 12. Now in this question number 12, how many people sit between R and S when counted from the right of R? Between R and S when counted from the right of S, so how many persons are there? As these two persons are opposite to each other, either to the left hand side or right hand side, we'll always have only three persons, and that is choice four. Then question number 13, who sits second to the left of O? Second to the left of O, O is facing towards the center, and second to the left of O is R. R that is given in choice four. Then question number 14, now in this 14, which of the following is true regarding Q? Regarding Q, only three people between Q and M, that is false because either two persons or four persons in between Q and M, but not three. And choice three, both R and P are immediate neighbors of Q. R and P are immediate neighbors of Q. This is also false because L and N are immediate neighbors of Q rather than R and P. And Q sits at one of the corners of the table. That's also false because Q is seated at the center. And Q sits a second to the left of S. Now, sir, S is facing towards the center. Now this Q is seated second to the right hand side. Isn't it? Then what is your answer here? None of the given statement. That is choice two. Now question number 14. It is choice two is the answer. Done with this? Now this is about question numbers 10 to 14. 
then 15 to 19. Now question numbers 15 to 19. Now it is based on input and output. First, check out the number of elements given in the input. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In total, we have how many? 12 elements. 12 elements are there. How many steps are required to get the final output? Six steps. That means in each step, how many elements are ad arranged? Two, two elements are arranged. Then again, then find out the logic behind this one. In order to find out the logic, which two should be compared? Input and the final output should be compared. Then in this one, now in the input, there are six numbers and six words were given. Now in the final output, what are these numbers here? 19, 63, and 75 are the three numbers. Now these three numbers are what? These three numbers are odd numbers. First odd numbers are added in the ascending order. Clear now? First in the first three positions, odd numbers are added in the, arranged in the ascending order, followed by, and what are these one? Unreal, iceberg, and abundant. Now these three words are the words which are started with the vowels or arranged in the ascending order in the next three places. Done with this? First numbers in the ascending order. Next, the words and the words which are started with the vowels are arranged in the descending order. Then followed by what? Followed by, what are these? Nation, kidney, and baffled. Now these three are what? These three are the words which are started with consonants. Followed by the consonants and the consonants in the ascending order or descending order? Consonants in the descending order. First, odd numbers in the ascending order. Next, the words which are started with the vowels in the descending order. Again, the consonants in the descending order. Finally, what are these numbers here? 28, 46, 94. 28, 46, 94. Now the even numbers are in the ascending order. Now the words are in, numbers are in the ascending order and the words are in the descending order. First, odd numbers followed by vowels, consonants, and finally, even numbers. Now this is the final logic. Then how these elements were arranged in order to identify this one? Now first we should compare these two. What are those two? Input and step one. Now if you compare these two input and step one, that's what is the change here? Or which elements are arranged in this one? Abundant came to the first place, isn't it? And at the same time, anything else? Abandoned, baffled, 46, iceberg, 19, unreal, and nation. Hence, uh, how many words? Two words. Now, between these two words, abandoned is what? Abandoned is the word which is starting with the vowel, that to the least one. Hence, after this one in step two, what happened to this one? Shifted to the second place. Step three, shifted to the third place. Fourth place, fifth place, finally it shifted to the sixth place. And in further steps, what happens here? This word has been shifted to the next position from the left-hand side to right-hand side. Then coming to this nation, now this nation must be at the seventh place, but where is in step one? Arranged at the twelfth place, next, eleventh place, next, tenth place, next one, ninth place, next, eighth place, finally shifted to seventh place. Isn't it? Now, the word and this one, both these two are arranged at the last two places, and further they were shifted to the left hand right. And after this abandoned, the next one is what? Iceberg. Now they have arranged it like this. And further steps, iceberg shifted to the next. Next one, unreal. And so on, 75, 63, 90. And similarly in this one also, nation, kidney, bearful, 28, 46. Now if you observe here, nation, kidney, bearful, 28, 46, 94. And here also nation, kidney, bearful. That means all these elements are arranged at the last place, then they were shifted to the next place. And in this one also, abandoned, 1963-75. 1963-75, check out the first elements here. Now 1963-75, unreal iceberg abandoned. Here also 1963-75, unreal iceberg. All these elements were shifted from the left hand side to right. Done with this? This is how the operation has been done. Now we need each step, exactly two, two elements. First, words. Next one, after all the words were done, then all the numbers. Clear now? Can you work out these questions, 15 to 19? Then, coming to question numbers 20 onwards. Now, 20 to 25. Question numbers 20 to 25. What is question number 20 here? All fares are prices. Now, these five questions are based on what? Five questions are based on 22. How many questions are there in this? 20 to 24, 20 to 24. All these five questions are based on syllogisms. Now all fares are prices. Now let us take all these fares are what? All fares are prices can be represented like this. Now first we are drawing the basic diagram. 
and some prices are cost. Some of the prices are cost means intersection between price and cost only. Whether some fares or cost is there or not is not clearly given. Now the information between price and cost is given, hence we have drawn up to here only without intersecting this fare and cost. Next one, all cost or tariff. All these costs are what? All cost or tariff. Now this is the basic diagram with the help of this one. First conclusion, no fare is tariff. No fare is tariff, true or false? Yes, it is definitely. Next one, no cost is fare. No cost is fare is also true. And so both the conclusions follow. And in these two conclusions, what happens here? Both these two conclusions which followed from the basic diagram, they are negative conclusions. As the negative conclusions follows from the basic diagram, now we should go for complementary pairs or to prove that alternate diagram. Yes, what is the complementary pair to this no fare is tariff? Now, in order to make this one false, now I should prove some fares are tariff. Now tell me whether I can prove like that or not. Some fares are tariff. Now I'm drawing my diagram like this. Now tariff will be like this. If I draw my tariff like this, then what happens here? Whether the statements are valid or not? All the statements are valid. At the same time, I have proven a case wherein some fares are tariff is true. Hence, no fare is a tariff will be false. Alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion will be false. Then coming to the next one, no cost is fair. As no cost is fair is true, in order to make this one false, now I should prove some of the cost are fair. Some cost are fair, tell me how can we draw this one. Some cost are fair, rather than drawing this cost like this, now tell me whether I can intersect this cost and fair or not. Hence, what happened to this one? Both the statements are valid at the same time. Now, the complementary pairs to these two were proven. That means alternate diagrams proven. The previous conclusions will be false. Then what is your answer here? Neither one nor two, that is choice two. Question number 20, choice two. Then, 21st. Some test or exam, some of the test or exam can be written like this, test and exam. Next one, no exam is a challenge. No exam is challenge. And next one, some challenges are wins. Some of the challenges are wins. Now this is the basic diagram to this one. First one, no test is a win. Test is here, win is here, that is definitely true. And some test are wins. Some test are wins is false. Because test is here, win is here, that is false. Now in order to make this the first conclusion, what is the first conclusion? Negative conclusion which is true. As the negative conclusion is true, to make this one false, now we should try the complementary pair. What is the complementary pair here? No test is win means, now we should prove some test are wins. Now tell me whether we can draw like that or not. Now this will be your win. If you draw your win like this, then this will be C. What is C here? And challenge. Now all the statements are valid or not? At the same time, what happened to this one? The previous conclusion will be false because alternate diagram proven, previous conclusion is false. After making the previous conclusion false, then what should we do? Chapul Angel. Once the alternate diagram is proven, then the previous negative conclusion will be false. Once the negative conclusion has been false, then check out any affirmative conclusion which was false in the basic diagram that has become true or not. In the basic diagram, this affirmative conclusion is false. Now, in the basic diagram, the second conclusion, what is the second conclusion? Some test or wins has become false. Now we should check out whether it can be true or not. Now in this diagram, now this is alternate diagram, right? Now in this alternate diagram, some test are wins are true in the other, some test are wins is true. As some test are wins is true, now it has become true now. Then what is your answer here? Whenever the first conclusion is true, second conclusion will be false. And in order to make the first conclusion false, now we have proven the second conclusion. Hence between these two, either the first conclusion or the second conclusion must be followed. Hence what is your answer here? Either one or two, choice five is the answer. Clear now? Hence, what is the answer? Choice five, question number 21. Then 22nd. Now in this question number 22, some tests are exams. Some of the tests are exam. This is test and exam. Some tests are exam. Then what is the next one here? No exam is a challenge. No exam is a challenge means no intersection between exam and challenge. And the next one, some challenges are wins. Some of the challenges are wins. Now first conclusion, all tests can never be examinations. Now this is a can never. Can never is what can. Whenever there is can, it comes under possibility. First to finalize the definite conclusion, then only let us come back to co possible conclusions. And what is the second one here? No win is an exam. Win is here, exam is here, that is definitely true. As no win is exam is true, it is a negative conclusion which is true to make this one false. Now we should prove some wins are examinations. Tell me whether we can draw this one or not. Some wins are examinations. Win and examination should be intersected. 
Now tell me whether we can intersect these two or not. Wind and examination means, now where can we fix this one? Now this is wind and exam. Now tell me whether we can draw wind like this or not. Huh? Why it is no? Check out the statements. What is the first statement? Some test are exam, some test. Now this is test and this is exam. Some test are exam. Next one, no exam is a challenge. Now also no exam is a challenge. Now exam and challenge were not intersected. Now which two were intersected? Here win and exam intersected, but not exam and challenge. Next one. And some challenges are wins. Some challenges are wins. Whether all the statements are valid or not. All the statements are valid at the same time I have proven a case wherein. I have proven a case wherein some wins are examinations is true. Some, ex some wins are examinations is true. No win is an exam will be false. Done with this one? Then coming to the first conclusion. What is the first conclusion here? All tests can never be challenges. Now we should check out whether all tests can be challenges or not. If all tests are challenges is possible, hence can never be challenges will be false. Now all tests are challenges. In order to make this one true, all tests are challenges means no. My challenge should be like this. If challenge is here and some challenges are wins, wins will be like this. Now tell me whether I can draw my challenge like this or not. If I draw challenge like this, then what is the statement here? No challenge is exam. No exam is a challenge. This is the intersection of these two. No challenge is an exam will be false. Hence, statement invalid. Statement invalid means it is not possible. And what is his claim? He is also claiming the same thing that it can never be possible. Hence, for me also it is not possible. Then what is your answer here? Only one follows. Only one choice. Only one choice three. Now question number 22, it is choice three is the answer. Done with this? Then coming to 23. Now in this question number 23, no proof is an evidence. No proof is an evidence. This is proof and this is evidence. No intersection between proof and evidence at all. And no proof is an indication. No proof is evidence and no proof is an indication. That means this proof should not be intersected with either with this indication or with evidence. Then first one is a possibility. Forget about this one. We'll discuss afterwards. And the second one is a definite conclusion. No evidence is an indication. No evidence is an indication. As of now, it is true. And as the negative conclusion is true, in order to make this one false, now we should prove some evidence or indication or not. Now tell me whether evidence and indication can be intersected or not. Yes. Because this evidence should not be intersected with this proof. Now this indication should not be intersected with this one proof. But with this indication and this evidence can be intersected, isn't it? Hence, what happened to this one? Alternate diagram proven. Previous conclusion will be false. Then coming to the first one, what is the first one here? All indications are evidence is a possibility. All indications are evidence is possible or not? Yes. Then how to draw this one rather than drawing my indication like this? Now I'm drawing my indication like this. Hence, what happened to this one? All indications are evidence is possible. Hence, conclusion two false, only conclusion one is true. Only conclusion one, it is given in choice four. Question number 23, choice four. Then, 24, all fares are prices. All these fares are prices. All fares are prices. And some prices are cost. Some prices are cost. And all costs are tariff. All these costs are what? All costs are tariff. All the statements are affirmative statement. The first one, some prices are tariff. Price and tariff. This is the intersection of these two. That is definitely true. And second one, all tariffs or prices is a possibility. All tariffs or prices is possible or not? As, a, as the statements are affirmative, we can write a single diagram in the case of possibility. That means this fare equal to price equals to cost equals to tariff. Hence, we can bring all these under one category. Hence, anything is possible. And so what is your answer here? Both the conclusions follow, both the conclusions choice one. And so whenever the statements are affirmative, we can directly go for a single diagram in the case of a possibility. Hence, both the conclusions follow, that is choice one, question number 24. Done with this? Then 25. Now, question number 25. How many such pairs of letters are there in the word sharply? S-H-A-R-P-L-Y. How many such pairs of letters are there in the word sharply? each of which has as many letters between them as in the word. Now starting with S, check out the elements. S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. Isn't it? Is there any letter which is matching here? S and Y are matching. T, U, V, W, X, Y. Hence between S and Y, how many letters are there in this word shortly? Five. 
And in the alphabetical order, order also, between S and Y, we are, we are having only five. What are those? T, U, V, W, X. And these five and that five is one and the same, hence, this forms a pair. Next, coming to H. I, J, K, L, I, J, K, L. And between I, H and L. Here, there are three letters. In the alphabetical sequence also, we'll have only three letters. Hence, these two forms a pair. Next one, A, B, C, D, E, R, S, T, and P, Q. Hence, from left hand side to right hand side, how many are there? There are two. Again, check out in the reverse order. In the reverse order, Y, there is no letter more than this Y. Hence, no need to count from Y. Again, from L, M, N, O, P, Q, P, Q, R, S, T, R, S, T, U, A, B, C, and so on. Hence, how many we could be able to find out? Only two such pairs. Hence, question number 30. It is choice. 25, sorry, question number 25, choice 4. Only two such pairs. Then question number 26 onwards. Now 26 to 30. Now question number 26 to 30. Now these questions are based on what? Inequalities. Now the relation between K and W. Now the relation between K and W, W greater than and lesser than two opposite symbols between W and K. Hence no conclusion can be drawn between these two. First conclusion does not follow. Then coming to the second one, Y and W. W is here, Y is here, the element which is common is U is come. Hence, U is greater than or equals to Y. Isn't it? As U is greater than or equals to Y, now between this one. Check out here from W to Y. What is the symbol which is common here? Greater than or equals to, greater than or equals to, greater than or equals to. Hence, W greater than or equals to Y is true. That is, Y is Y lesser than or equals to W is also true. Then what is your answer here? Only two conclusion two follows, choice two. Question number 26, choice two is the answer. Then 27, now in this question number 27, 27. Now the relation between P and S. S is here and P is here. What is the element which is common between these two? R is common. Now between R and P, what is the relation here? R greater than P, isn't it? R greater than P is what the conclusion we got, but as R equals to S, as R equals to S in the first statement, hence S greater than P. As S greater than P is true, P lesser than S is also true. Hence first conclusion, definitely true. Then coming to the second one, now in the second, the relation between L and P. L and P, L is here and P is here. What is the letter which is common here? R is common. Now between L and R, L lesser than R and R greater than P. And so what is your answer here? Two opposite symbols lesser than and greater than, and the second conclusion does not follow. And so only conclusion one is true, choice four. Question number 27, choice four. Then question number 28. Now in this question number 28, the relation between Y and M. Now between Y to W and W to M. Y to W, what is the relation here? Y lesser than W. And M and W, M greater than or equals to W means W is lesser than or equals to M. Now between Y and M lesser than, lesser than or equals to Y lesser than M is definitely true. Done with this? Then coming to the second one, the relation between S and D. Now the relation between S and D, W greater than S, W greater than S, and this W is greater than D, that means D is lesser than W. D lesser than W, W greater than S between D and S, one lesser than, one greater than, hence what happened to this one? Hence no conclusion can be drawn. And the second conclusion does not follow, only conclusion one is two, choice four. Question number 28, it is choice four. Then 29th. Now question number 29, the relation between J and L. J and L, which element is common here? Letter P is common between these two. P and J, P lesser than J. And J and L, P lesser than or equals to L means L greater than or equals to P. L greater than or equals to P, P lesser than J. Two opposite symbols, hence no conclusion can be drawn. Then what is the next one here? S and J. Now between S and J, S lesser than J, definitely true. Hence what is your answer here? Only choice five. Only two conclusion two follows, choice five is the answer. Then question number 30. Now question number 30. Now in this one, what is the answer here? The relation between, if you observe here, both the conclusions is in between Y and S. As in between Y and S, find out here S is here and Y is here. What is the letter which is common here? Q is common. S less than or equals to Q, less than or equals to Y. S less than or equals to Y is true. That means Y greater than or equals to S is also true. That means Y can be either greater or equal. Either greater or equal, either or, hence choice three is the answer. Now question number 30, choice three. Now this is about question numbers 26 to 30. Done with this? Then 31 to 35. After this 31 to 35. Now this 31 to 35. 
It's based on what? Now 31 to 35, eight people, P, Q, R, S, W, X, Y, and Z, live on eight different floors of a building, but not necessarily in the same order, isn't it? Eight floors are there, floor arrangement, whenever floor arrangement has been given, and write down the floors at the center from top to bottom, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, just the persons were given, there is no other parameter added to this one, isn't it? Then, if you draw like this, if there is a second possibility, we can work out simultaneously to the left hand side or to the right hand side. And then, now P lives on an odd number floor below the floor number six. Odd number floor below the floor number six. Hence, P can be either on one, three, and five. How many possibilities are there for this P? There are three possibilities. Now, out of these three possibilities, P can be, this is one possibility, and the next possibility, P can be here. Isn't it? Now, first we are working on these two possibilities simultaneously, and, or else, if you take this P as well. Hence, how many possibilities do we have? There are three possibilities. One, three, and five. Then, out of this one, three, and five, P lives on an odd number floor below the floor number six, and Y lives immediately above P. As Y lives immediately above P, in this case, Y must be on the second floor, and in this case, Y must be on the sixth floor, and in this case, Y must be on the fourth floor. Y lives immediately above P. Only three people live between Y and W. How many persons in between Y and W? Exactly three. Now, in this case, one, two, three, W must be on the sixth floor. Now, in this case, in case two. Now, let us take this is case one, this is case two, and this will be case three. Now, in case two, what happens here? Then three persons in between Y and W as Y is on the sixth floor and W must be on the second floor. Then only three persons in between Y and W. Three persons in between Y and W. Now in this case, three persons in between Y and W. Where should this W be? W must be on the eighth floor. And W can be either on the sixth floor or the second floor or on the eighth floor. Then three people live between Y and W. There are as many people between W and R as between R and V. Yes, what do you mean by this one? The number of persons in between W and R equals to the number of persons between R and Y. If between W and R, if there is one person between R and Y, there must be one person. Between W and R, if there are two persons and between R and Y, there must be two persons and so on. Isn't it? That means which element is common between these two? R is common. As R is common between these two, hence R must be in between these two or not? R must be in between these two. Then W and R, W, R and R and Y, now, in this case, R is here. If, now, tell me whether R can be here or not. If R is here, between W and R, how many persons are there? No person. But between R and Y, there are two persons. It cannot be the case. Now, tell me whether R can be here or not. Yes. Between W and R, how many persons are there? There is one person between W and R. And in between R and Y also, there is one person. Isn't it? And number of persons between W and R equals to the number of persons between R and Y. And similarly, in this case, between W, that means this R must be exactly between W and Y. Exactly between means one, one places, or two, two places, or three, three places. Hence, R must be in between these two. Between W and R, there is one person, and R and Y, there is one more person. Now, in this case also, R must be at this place. Hence, R can be either on the fourth floor or on the sixth floor. Then, only three people live between this one. There are as many people between W and R as between R and Y. And Z lives on an odd number floor below Y. Z is odd number floor below Y, but not on floor number three. Z is odd number floor below Y. Now, in the first case, which is not at all possible, because Y himself is on the second floor, and the first floor P is already there, and there is no place left for this Z, hence first case is ruled out. Isn't it? Then coming to the next one. Now, in the second case, what happens here? This Z can be either at this place or at this place, because these two are odd number places, out of which Z is not on the third floor, hence Z must be on the first floor. Then coming to the third one. Now, in the third one, this Z must be on the first floor, only one possibility. Then next one. And Z lives on an odd number floor below Y, but not on floor number three. Only one person between Q and X. How many persons are there in between Q and X? There must be exactly one person between Q and X. As there are one person between Q and X, if Q is here, there is no place for X. Hence, Q or X cannot be here. Now, tell me whether Q is here. If Q is here, X must be here, which is not possible. Or if Q is here, X must be here, which is not possible. Hence, there is no place for this Q and X in case number two. Finally, we are left with what? Case number three. 
That means between Q and X, there must be exactly one means. These two persons must be in the alternate floors. Hence, Q and X can be like this, or Q, isn't it? Q and X can be in these two places. And that is the only possibility for this Q and R, X. And Q lives above X. As Q lives above X, hence Q is here, X will be here. And Q and X is here, then who is a person left over? P, Q, R, S. P, Q, R, S is a person left over, and S must be on the second floor. Done with this one. Though we have started with three possibilities, out of which two possibilities were invalid with the help of one of the information. And finally, we are left with only one case. Then, question number 30 first. If Q and Y interchange their places, Q and Y are interchanging their places means Y is coming to this place and Q is going to the place of Y. Q and Y are interchanging their places and so do W and S. W and S are also interchanging. That means S is coming to this place. Now W is coming to the place of S. And then who will be between Q and W as per the new arrangement? S tell me who is the person between Q and W. Now P is the person. Hence P that is given in choice 5. Question number 31, choice 5. Then coming to 32, who among the following lives on the floors? On the floor number 3. As who is living on floor number 3? P. And that P is given in choice 3. Question number 32, choice 3. Then 33rd, as per the given arrangement, as per the given arrangement, 4 of the following 5 is nothing but an odd man out. Now W and 5. Now W and 5, how many persons are there in between these two? W is 8 and this is 5. 8 and 5. Next one, X and 8. X is what? X is 5 and this is 8. And next one, X and 8. And a Q and 4. What is the position of Q? Q lives on 7th floor and this is 4. And Y and 1. Y is on 4th floor and this is 1. And next one, S and 3. And S and 3, what is the value of this S? S is 2 and 3. S, what is odd one out? Tell me here. Now 8 and 5, the difference between these two is 3. Now here also in choice 2, 5 and 8, the difference is 3. 7 and 4 in choice 3, the difference is 3. And in choice 4 also, the difference between these two is 3. That means what is your answer here? Choice 5, there is no difference between these two. The difference is 1. Except in choice 5 and in the remaining choices, exactly two persons are staying between the person and the floor. But as here, in choice 5, these two are adjacent to each other, hence choice 5 is the answer. Then question number 34. On which of the following floors members does R live? As tell me, R lives on which floor? R lives on 6th floor. R lives on 6th floor, that is choice 1, 34. Then, 35. Now, question number 35, who among the following lives exactly between S and X? Between S and X, who are the persons here? Between S and X, there are two persons, Y and P and Y. P and Y, choice 5. Now, this is about question numbers 31 to 35. Done with this? Then, 36 to 40. Now, question numbers 36 to 40. What is given in this one? 36 to 40, seven friends. Seven friends, namely P, Q, R, S, T, U, and V, visit seven different cities, namely Berlin, Kabul, Jakarta, Madrid, Chicago, Miami, and Sydney, not necessarily in the same order, starting from Monday and ending on Sunday. Now, clearly specified. Hence, which one should be fixed here? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday must be fixed at the center. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Hence, and how many parameters are there? There are two parameters. First one, the person, and the second one, the place they visited. Isn't it? Hence, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, the person and the place they have visited. And Friday, Saturday, and finally, Sunday. Then tell me what is the order here? No, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Q visits a city on Wednesday. Q visits a city on Wednesday, Q must be here. Isn't it? Q visits a city on Wednesday, and only one person, only one person visits between Q and the one who visits Madrid. Q and Madrid, how many persons are there? There's exactly one. As there is exactly one, this person who visited Madrid can be on Monday, or there are two possibilities. As there's a second possibility, now we should start working on the second possibility as well. Now if Q is on, Q is on Wednesday, and Madrid, the person who visits Madrid must be on, on which day? On Friday. Because there must be exactly one person between. Now this is case one and this is case two. Now two possibilities. And T visits immediately after the one who visits Madrid. Immediately after Madrid, hence T must be on Tuesday in case one. And in case two, T must be on Saturday. And only T visits immediately after the one who visits Madrid. Only four people between 
T and the one who visits Sydney. Between T and Sydney, how many persons must be there? There are four. As T is on Tuesday, one, two, three, four. And the person who visits Sydney must be on Sunday in case one. And in case two, between T and Sydney, there must be exactly four persons. As T is on Saturday, one, two, three, four. And the person who visits Sydney must be on Monday. And Sydney can be either on Sunday or Monday. Then, only one person visits between the one who visits Sydney and R. Between Sydney and R, there must be exactly one person. Now, in case one, Sydney, the person who visits Sydney is visiting on Sunday. One person between these two and R must be on Friday. And in case two, between Sydney and R, there must be exactly one person. As Sydney is on Monday, now the R must be on Wednesday. But whereas Q is already on Wednesday, hence R cannot be in the same place, and the second case is completely ruled out. Now we are left with only one case. Then coming to the next one. And the one who visits Berlin visits immediately before R. Berlin is immediately before R. Berlin, R is on th Friday, hence Berlin must be on Thursday. And the one who visits Chicago visits on one of the days before the one who visits Berlin. Before Berlin. Chicago is one of the days before Berlin, either it could be on Tuesday or Wednesday. And Chicago is on one of the days before visits, but not on Wednesday. But not on Wednesday means Chicago cannot be here. As Chicago cannot be here, and this Chicago must be on Tuesday. Chicago is on Tuesday. And more than three people visit between the one who visits Chicago and P. Between Chicago and P, more than three people means, more than three means either it could be four, five, six, and so on. Isn't it? More than three. Here, Chicago is here. And more than three between Chicago and P. At Chicago is on Tuesday, one, two, three. More than three, four persons. Isn't it? Hence, where should this P be? As P. Now, can P be at this place? Tell me, if P is here, how many persons are there in between Chicago and P? There are only three people. But as the condition is more than three. As more than three, P cannot be on Saturday. Hence, P must be on Sunday. Done with this one? Because there are four persons in between Chicago and P. That is the only possibility. Next one. Only two people between S and the one who visits Miami. S and Miami, there must be exactly two. Now, the possibilities for this S can be on Monday and Thursday or Saturday. Out of which one, now let us check out where this S be. Now, tell me whether S can be on Monday. If you take S is on Monday, then two persons in between S and Miami. If S is here, Miami must be on Thursday, which is not possible because Berlin is already on Thursday. Hence, S cannot be on Monday. I just cannot be on Monday. Now tell me whether S can be on Thursday or not. If S is on Thursday, two persons between. If S is on Thursday, two people between S and Miami. If S is here, two persons between S and Miami, Miami must be on Monday, which is not possible. And in the downwards, if you check out here, two persons between S and Miami. Next, Miami must be on Sunday. That's also not possible. Hence, S cannot be on Monday. S cannot be on Thursday. Hence, what is the only thing left over here? S must be on S must be on Saturday. If S is on Saturday, two persons between S and Miami. Now these two are the persons between S and Miami. Miami must be on Wednesday. Clear now? And only two people between the Miami and the one who visits Jakarta. Jakarta and Miami, there must be exactly two. Miami is on Wednesday and two persons means Jakarta, the person who visited Jakarta must be on Saturday. And what is left over here? And V does not visit Berlin. As V does not be visit Berlin, V cannot be on Thursday, hence V must be on Monday. If V is on Monday, P, Q, R, S, T, U, and V are the persons P, Q, R, S, T, V, hence this person must be U. Isn't it? Then what are the cities here? Madrid, Chicago, Miami, Berlin, next one, Kabul. Hence, R visited Kabul on Friday. Done with this? Now this is about question number 36 to 40. Now question number 36. Who among the following visits Kabul? As yes, tell me who is the person who visits Kabul? R. R visits Kabul, that is choice three. Then question number 37. Which of the following cities does P visit? As yes, tell me, P visits Sydney. Sydney, that is given in choice five. Then question number 38. On which of the following days does S visit a city? S visits a city on which day? On Saturday. Saturday, that is choice three. Then question number 39. Now in this question number 39, four out of the following. Four out of the following is nothing but an odd man on Q and Wednesday. Q and Wednesday, Q visited on Wednesday, and T Thursday, and T Thursday is false because T is Tuesday, and R and Friday. R Friday, R is on Friday, and V is on Monday, and P is on Sunday is also true. Then what is your answer here? 
T is on Tuesday, but here it is Thursday. Except twice to end in the remaining the person and the day on which he visited is correctly given. Hence, choice two is the answer. Then question number 40, which of the following is true about you? Yes, which is true about you? You visit a city on Saturday, true or false? You visit a city on Thursday, hence the first choice is false. And you visit a city immediately before T, U is immediately before T is false because U is immediately before R, but not T. And third one, you visit Berlin, definitely true. Then what is your answer here? Choice three. Hence question number 40, choice three is the answer. Done? Now this is about paper number 20585. Question numbers 1 to 40. And apart from this one, now what else were left over here? Number series. Now number series questions, please. Question numbers 51 to 55. Now in this question numbers 51 to 55. Now question number 51. Any answer to this one? 24, 26. What are the numbers given here? 24, 26, 20, 32, and 12. What is the difference between these two? As the numbers are decreasing at a smaller rate, it must be under difference only. Now the difference between 24 and 26. Yes, what is the difference here? 24 plus 2 is 26. Next one, 26 and 20, what is the difference here? Minus 6. And next one, and 20 and 32, what is the difference here? Here the difference is plus 12. And the next one, 32 and 12, here the difference is how much? Minus 20. And the next one should be how much? Next number should be added or subtracted. Plus 2, minus 6, plus 12, minus 20, and the next number should be added. And what is that number here? 2, 6, 12, 20. Now this 2 can be written as, or else the diff 2 and 6. 2 and 6, 2 can be written as 1 square plus 1. And 6 can be written as 2 square plus 2. And 12 can be written as 3 square plus 3. And 20 can be written as 4 square plus 4. And the next one must be 5 square plus 5. What is 5 square plus 5? 5 square plus 5 is 30. And 5 square plus 5 is 30. Now this 30 should be added to this one. 30 plus 12, 42. Or else, these numbers 2, 6, 12, 20 can be written as, how can you write this one? 2 can be written as 1 into 2, and 6 can be written as 2 into 3, and 12 can be written as 3 into 4, and 20 can be written as 4 into 5, and 5 into 6, and so on. Clear now? And so what is the answer here? 42, that is choice 1. Question number 51, choice 1. Then 52. Now question number 52, 6, 4, 5, 11, blank, 189. Now if you observe here, number sudden increases to 189. As there is a sudden increase in the number, it must be under either product or combination. As product or combination here, then find out. 6 and 4 cannot be related in the product, hence it must be under combination only, isn't it? Hence in the case of combination, check out here, 6 and 4, how can you express this one? 6 and 4, and 6 into how much? 6 into 1 minus 2, or 4 and 1, 4 into 1 plus 1, and 5 and 11. Yes, so how can you express this one? 5 and 11, 5 into 2 plus 1, or 5 into 2 plus 1, or 5 into 3 minus 4. Because all these numbers are small numbers, hence we'll have n number of possibilities between these numbers. And now if you take 5 into 3, 15 minus 4, that is one possibility. Then this will be how much? 4 into 2 minus 3, and this will be into 1 minus 2. Check out these numbers, into 1, into 2, into 3, into 4. And next one, into 5. And minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and minus 6. Check out whether you are getting the number or not. 11 into 4, 44 minus 5 is how much? 39. And 39 into 5 is how much? 195 minus 6, 189. And so what is the missing number here? 39 is the missing number, choice 2. The given numbers are multiplied with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what are subtracted here? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers are subtracted. Done with this? Now this is about question number 52. Then question number 53. Now question number 53. 19, 10, 11, 18, 38. Question number 53. Here's question number 53. Now in this question number 53, 19, 10, 11, 19, 10, 11, 18, 38. As tell me, what is the logic behind this one? 19 and 10. Yes, 
no number decreased once from the area onwards it started increasing hence whenever the number decreased once and increasing hence it must be under point for 19 into point 5 is 9 point 5 plus point 5 is 10 and 10 into 1 plus 1 is 11 and 11 into 1 point 5 is so much 11 into 1 point 5 11 plus 5 point 5 16 point 5 plus 1 point 5 will be 18 into point 5 plus point 5 into 1 plus 1 into 1 point 5 plus 1 point 5 into 2 plus 2 now 18 into 2 is so much 36 plus 2 38 and 38 into 2 point 5 plus 2 point 5 that's what is answer here 38 into 2 point 5 38 into 2 76 plus 19 76 plus 19 95 plus 2 point 5 97 point 5 now this 97 point 5 given in choice 5 then this is about question number 53 next 54 now in question number 54 now if you observe here the numbers are in the decreasing order whenever the numbers are in the decreasing order we should always start in the reverse order isn't it now starting from where starting from 6 21 66 and 201 and 606 now the numbers are increasing at a very fast rate started from 6 and and increase it to 606 hence as it comes under as the numbers are increasing it must be either multiplication or combination out of which 6 and 21 cannot be expressed in the multiplication hence it must be combination and 6 and 21 into 3 plus 3 or into 4 minus 4 we can work out both these hence in the case of combination always try at the last pair highest numbers 201 and 606 what is answer here 201 into 3 is so much 201 into 3 3 603 plus 3 into 3 plus 3. because at the highest numbers will have only one possibility if you start at the least number you will have more than one possibility and next one 66 and 201 66 into 3 is 198 plus 3, 201. And 21 into 3, 23 plus 3, 66. Isn't it? 63 plus 3, 66. And this one also, 6 into 3, 18 plus 3, 21. Each of these numbers is multiplied with 3 and 3 is added. Into 3 plus 3, into 3 plus 3. Now, x into 3 plus 3 must be 6, which implies that x must be how much? 1 into 3 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. Then what is the missing number here? 1 is the missing number. Done with this? And question number 54, choice for 1. Then, coming to question number 55, what is there in this 55? 18, 19, 24, 37, 66. 18, 19, 18, 19, 18 and 19. What is the difference between 18 and 19 here? The difference between these two is 1 plus 1. And next one, 19 and 24, what is the difference here? Plus 5, 1, 5. 24 and 37, the difference is 13. 1, 5, 13. 37 and 66, difference is how much? Difference, 29. Now, how to express this one? 1, 5, 13, 29. 1, 5, 13, 29. 1 and 5 can be written as 1 into 2 plus 3, isn't it? And 5 into 2, 10 plus 3, 13. 13 into 2, 26 plus 3, 29. And 29 into 2 plus 3. 29 into 2 is so much, 58 plus 3. 61 should be added. And 66 plus 61. How much is that one? 127. 127 choice for. Or else? Now, between the differences, you can go for this one also. 1 and 5 plus 4, here the difference is 8, and here the difference is 16. 4, 8, 16, and the next difference will be 32. And 29 plus 32, 61 should be added. In either of these two cases, you will get the same answer. Clear now? This is about question number 55. And one more question is there. Now, 56. Now, in this question number 56, what is the answer here? Now, 19, 19.6, and so on. Now, sir. Whenever there is a decimal, always try to remove the decimal. Now 19 can be written as 190, and the next one is 196, and to remove the decimal, 208, and next one, 232, and finally, 280. Then tell me what is the next number. Now 90 and 96, the difference is 6. Here the difference between 196 and 208 is so much. 8 plus 4, 12, isn't it? And the next difference is so much, 208 and 32. Here the difference is 24. The next difference is so much, 32 and 80. 32 and 80, 48. Then how to relate this one? 6 into 2, 12 into 2, 24 into 2, 48. And 48 into 2, how much should be added here? 96. Hence, plus 96. 280 plus 96 will be how much? 280 plus 100 will be 380 minus 4, 376. Now, 376, earlier we have removed the decimal. Now, we should put this decimal. What is the number here? 37.6, so I two. Clear now? And this is about question numbers 51 to 56 in paper number 20585. 
done with this, 1 to 40 and 51 to 56 are the questions we dealt with this. Yes, any doubts in this paper apart from this? Done? Then, after this, any doubts in the clerical paper? Clerical paper. Yes? Chapter any doubts in the discussion. No doubts? Fine, we can.